Now let's take a minute to talk about cardio. The novice training program is really just a strength training program. But if you're interested in also incorporating cardio into that, we can, we can do that as well. It, it pairs quite well with it. So the physical activity guidelines recommend two to three days of strength training per week. So you're going to get that with NTP. Uh, for cardio, they recommend a 150 minutes of moderate activity uh, or 75 minutes of vigorous activity or some combo of both. And that's per week. Uh, you can do more than that as well, but those are the bare minimum standards. So uh, I'll argue that that you can't strength train without doing cardio. So you can't independently, you know, use your muscles without using your heart. So you are getting some type of um, cardiovascular benefit from the strength training as well. Uh, but for the purposes of, of calculating this, we're not going to count the strength training into the physical activity guidelines because that's the way they're set up. Um, although it definitely, you definitely are doing cardio when you're lifting. But if you're looking at um, doing some type of, of, of cardio in addition to what you're doing with NTP, first we got to think about, are you going to do moderate or are you going to do vigorous? Now, light activity does not count for this. We'll talk about light activity at the end. But first of all, how do we know if something's moderate or vigorous? There's a lot of different ways to determine it. I think one of the easiest ways to use is the talk test. So if you are able to hold a comfortable conversation like I am right now, you are doing light activity. So it doesn't meet, uh, you're not, it's not intense enough to, you're not at moderate or vigorous yet. So what I want you to do is picture yourself on an exercise bike with your earbuds in. Let's say you're on that bike and someone gives you a phone call uh, and you answer. If you can talk as I'm talking right now, that's light activity. If you can hold a conversation, but it's uncomfortable and you are definitely not interested in having that conversation, that's true moderate. And that person on the other end of the phone, even if they couldn't hear the bike, they would definitely know you're working out based on your labored responses. Now, if you can only answer in like one word at a time, like yes, no, that or you can't talk at all, that's intense. So I think that's a really good, easy way for, for especially for novices to gauge whether it's light activity, moderate or intense. And I'll put some instructions in the description below if you, if you need a little bit more help with that. Now, how do we factor in light activity? Light activity, let's just log that as steps per day. Now, the CDC recommends that we take about 8,000 to 12,000 steps per day. If you get on the CDC website, there's some interesting information. Um, they, they've done a little bit of research or they've looked at some research and they consider 4,000 steps per day to be, or lower to be low. Now, when you look at 8,000 steps per day compared to 4,000 steps per day, you're seeing uh, the research shows, or at least their research shows that there's uh, an over a 50% decrease in death from all causes. So it's not a guarantee that you're, it's going to prolong your life, but you know, it's free and there's some really, really good research to show that, you know, that there's a possibility, there's a strong positive correlation between walking more and living longer. Now, if you take it up to 12,000 steps per day, I think it goes up above like 60% decrease in all cause mortality. So there doesn't seem to be an upper limit for the benefit of walking and getting more steps. So that's how we're gonna factor in the light activity. So remember that the physical activity guidelines that we talked about before, that 150 minutes of moderate activity or 75 minutes of vigorous activity or a combo of both, that really only accounts for that moderate to vigorous. So you're gonna be, let's say using the talk test for that. If you can hold a conversation like this, you're in that light category. And then for that, we're just looking at steps per day. Now, when you're looking at steps per day, if you're calculating that, or you know, you've got some type of wearable device that records that, everything counts. So the steps that you do in your workout, the steps that you're doing in, in your cardio, it, just factor that all in. It's just the amount of steps that you're getting overall. Um, if you don't have a wearable device, and they're pretty cheap. I mean, you don't have to get like a smartwatch, uh, but you can just get a pedometer. So if you go on Amazon, you'll be able to find them. They're not very expensive. Most cell phones have them. So if you have the phone on you, there are free apps or a lot of the phones come with the app on there. 
If not, there are other ways you can estimate it. Um, they're not super accurate. So I would recommend in maybe investing in a step counter or playing around with some apps on your phone. Uh, but that way, that combined with the novice training program, now you've got um, a very well-rounded program that's going to help you at least meet the bare minimum physical activity guides, guidelines. And again, this is a springboard for something that, that's going to set you up for success for, for some other program later on, uh, if that's what you want to do. Or you could just stick with this um, because, again, consistency is key. So consistency over a long period of time. I would rather have someone just get, you know, 8,000 to 12,000 steps per day and be doing, you know, their 150 minutes of moderate cardio and then lifting with a very simple program two times a week. If you did that for 50 years, uh, you know, I, I don't know that you're going to have any less health benefit than someone who's maybe, you know, in that January to February time frame, getting a gym membership and going hard and then taking a couple months off. I actually think you're probably going to be better off. So um, this method is a great way for, for new people or people who are super busy or who are just nervous about getting into exercise. You can really get your feet wet um, and get a lot of health benefit out of it really with a low cost, no cost at all, really. I mean, if you can do this for free without a gym membership, but also just, you know, energy wise, this isn't going to tax you too much. The really the only thing that's going to tax is your time. So you're going to just have to work your schedule around, but I hope that